And away we go. It is the nightcap brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken right here on BearcatJournal.com, www.galacticfriedchicken.com. Go to the website. They will get it delivered right to your front door pretty much anywhere inside the 275 loop. Or you can head down to Dayton, Kentucky. Go see our friends at Galactic Fried Chicken. The patio is about to be open. Uh, they have a delightful outdoor dining experience. Tell them to pump it up. Save yourself 15%. Off of the galactic goodness. All right, Aaron. Let's get it kicked off. This, this is not... Uh, I, I will make this uh, connected to UC at some point in this conversation. I'm not sure when, but I have something that connects this all together. Um, I think it's time to have a talk about uh, about coaching in college sports. Because we saw this week a seismic shift in coaching. And yeah, it, it started last year with, with Coach K retiring. Yeah, but that's a retirement. That, like, we knew at some point Coach K was in his 70s. Like, Coach K was going to move on. Roy Williams was going to move on. <clears throat> the the guys it, that it, in. And those the only one left, right? Yeah, and I don't know how much longer that's going to last. Honestly. I agree. I, I'm surprised it's lasted till today. I, I don't know if that's coming or if or if what's going to happen with that. But I'm I'm surprised he's still there for the Floyd. Yes, I, I'm. I'm not shocked because he's a lifer. Um, he's maybe a little bit more stubborn than well, and you know what the other the difference is between like Roy and Kay and those guys. They have like a handful of championships. Izzo's got one. Like he's still looking for that validation that the guys that have left, Jay Wright had multiple, K had multiple, Roy had multiple. Like you yeah. can you can move off into the sunset with your handful of rings and feel pretty good about yourself. If you got one, Danny Hurley's got two. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Kevin Alley's got one. Mm. So one. I can you can see luck, why you, you can luck into one. Right. I can see why. And guess what? Izzo's one should have been Cincinnati. Let's well, just I, call it Spade I Spade. I, I'm forever going to be haunted by Mateen Cleaves dancing on one foot. Right. Izzo's one should have been the Bearcats. But I digress. John Calipari, after 15 years at Kentucky... <laughs> Does the uh, end of the season dance? They lose to Oakland. Kentucky doesn't want to fire him because if they fire him, they owe him thirty-three million. So right. he 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 does a TV show with the athletic director. We love each other. We're gonna we're gonna get this right. We're gonna we're gonna get Kentucky basketball back to the mountaintop. And then here comes Arkansas, who I don't know. If, People realize this, but like Arkansas is one of when you talk about big money, big money, big, big money. You know, the two biggest donors to Arkansas athletics are don't Walmart. They're, they're, I've heard of them. They're, pretty they're based in Arkansas. Okay. And Tyson Chicken, who is also oh. massive. They've, they've been, they've been. In some rocky waters of late, but but they have a lot of money. They've made a lot of money over the years. Sure, the, the waters might be rocky, but the chicken business is pretty good. We eat a lot of chicken. Um, sure, they have like donors with fu money. Like it doesn't matter. Do you need a million? Well, yeah, I got a million. I mean, that's I, all you need I is went, a million. Here you go. I went to the Arkansas football game, and I can tell you, at least from the experience I had there. The entirety of the fan base treats it as a pageant. It was a, yeah. I mean, they're, they're the girls are showing up to a football game in dresses, all of right. them, like like right. not jeans and hoodies, dresses, no, dresses, full on like formal attire, formal dress, yeah, like yeah, like, I mean, semi formal. We'll, we'll say some. You got you still <laughs> still in yeah. a stadium. Let's be real, like right, right. We know what but, stadiums are like, but but yes, to your point, they they are in, in 
whether they're going in or not, it doesn't matter. They're all dressed in semi-formal. Guys are in polos and slacks. And right. Pleated it's a big shorts. Deal. Yeah. It's a big it's, deal. It's, you're going with the intent to meet your future everything. Right. Probably should have went to some SEC schools back in the day, but it worked out well for me. Um, not complaining about that. Um, but <laughs> Coach Cal going to Arkansas is uh, he has known the guy that's like the CEO or like the founder of Tyson for a long time. He had like if you actually go back, um, there are tweets from John Calipari about their trips to Arkansas, like, hey, spent some time this weekend with the Tyson family, one of the best people on the face of the planet. And Arkansas has a period in their past in the 90s where they were a powerhouse in college basketball. Nolan Richardson, Corliss Williamson, like they were they won a national championship. They were they were a big deal. And they long for those days. So they gave Coach Cal, an exit strategy. Kentucky wasn't going to fire him. They weren't just going to hand him $33 million to go away, but he knew he wasn't wanted. And when the Arkansas job came open, which is crazy, you know what the craziest part about this is, Aaron? I don't. The SMU job triggered this. That is crazy. The S- SMU fires their coach, Rob Lanier, who had two successful seasons. Yeah. SMU was on the upswing. Yeah. There is some talk out there. This is the wild part. There is some talk out there that SMU made the move because Musselman, Eric Musselman, who is the Arkansas coach, let SMU know I would be interested in your job if you took it. Knowing that Andy Enfield from USC wanted to go wanted to be in Dallas. So Musselman hmm. triggers the job open. Andy Enfield takes it. Musselman parts for USC. Now the job is open. And Arkansas goes and gets Coach Cal, who had obviously felt like I've done everything I can do at Kentucky, which was probably true. Because Coach Cal said one of the smartest things ever at the beginning of his Kentucky career. 10 years at a blue blood, 10 years is about it. Because of the grind and like the the fans and the relationship. If you make it 10 years at a blue blood, it's probably time to search for something else. He had 10 amazing years. Five, the last five, he's been there 15 years. 10 great years, five years, not so great. And the Kentucky fan base was done with Coach Cal. So now Coach Cal is gone. Looking at all of the five stars, four stars, first round draft picks. So that Aaron, he has had was, at dinner tonight, I ran into somebody that knew me. Like <laughs> the guy heard my voice and he said, Are you Chad Brendel? And I said, uh, easy tiger. No, just kidding. But like, are you, he's like, I recognize your voice immediately from the radio. I'm like, wow, that's probably not a good thing. Uh, but you know how many they're going to have probably Reed Shepard, Rob Dillingham, Justin Edwards are going to be drafted this year. You know how many NBA first round draft picks that makes in 15 years for John Calipari? Just take a guess. Like 50. It's something stupid. It's stupid. Yeah. It's stupid. 50. (laughs) 50. They are at 47. With those, when those three guys get drafted in the first round, it's going to be 50. So, no, for you to say that he did all he could, I disagree. I think that he just was maybe not the coach we thought he was. I don't know that anybody ever thought he was a great tactical. Hell of a, he was always hell a, of a really recruiter. Good, hell of a recruiter. He was, he was typically always a great defensive coach. He was never a good coach on offense. When you look at a lot of his guys, guess what happened? They went to the NBA, and all of a sudden we were like, damn, those dudes are fucking great on offense. But we didn't (laughs) see that at Kentucky, right? Carl Anthony Towns went to the NBA, and everybody was like, 
that motherfucker can shoot. De'Aaron Fox might might be the best offensive of all of them. And Tyler Hero. I mean, mm. when he's been healthy, that when, guy was yeah. like, like yeah. that guy's been awesome when he's been healthy. Anthony he didn't Davis. show that in Kentucky. Anthony Davis, he they didn't let him shoot at Kentucky. No, they were he afraid of his NBA, unibrow. Hanging threes, right, right. So yeah, I, I'm not. I I agree with you that there are some holes in Cal as a tactical, especially what we've seen the last two years from Danny Hurley, where he just schools people offensively. Cal never did that. Well, never but did. Cal has been Cal's been a players coach. He's been one to advocate for the players before the. Sure. Any before anybody was advocating for players, which sure, in in fairness, he was also dropping bags. Let's let's call a spade a spade. There was plenty of of dirty money being passed around. Here's the funny thing, Aaron. They're really (laughs) Mm. this is listen. Mm. Let me let me explain. Let me explain. This is the Mm. hilarious part of all that. He was a guy that did drop a lot of bags at Memphis and in his early days at Kentucky. But he got to a point after those first couple years where there was a realization of like, we don't have to drop backs. We're Kentucky. You're going to make, when you leave here, 50 first round draft picks, when you leave here, you're going to make the money. We don't have to illegally pay you because the next step, and let me get there. Hold on. Before you get that angry look on your face. I oh, see no, I, I didn't. I, I didn't see it. I, it. I didn't say a word. When NIL started, Cal remained of the belief that we don't have to give you money because the reason you come to Kentucky is that you're going to get the money next year. Like, a shit ton of it. So they were way behind in NIL. I, I was thinking about this today. Cal kind of approached NIL in a in a different but similar fashion to Luke Fickle, where he sold the boosters on, we're going to do this the right way. We're not going to fall victim to, you know, giving guys a million dollars or whatever. You come here because you want to be here. We'll get you some money, but we're not going to get in bidding wars. We're not going to, like, we're not going to go crazy. It That's what hurt Kentucky. Is because you get into this. Once you tell your boosters that, Aaron, there's no changing course. We talked about Luke had a, a when, when. The barn right dinner? Before, right before his last season, when they had a couple commits decommit and take money elsewhere. They arranged for an NIL dinner where they were going to tell everybody basically at the barn, they were going to tell everybody basically we kind of calculated this wrong and we're going to need to recalibrate. Nobody showed up because they had already been told we are not going to be a school that leans on our donors to buy our roster. The coach took that stance. When the coach realized that stance was wrong and tried to pivot, you can't take it back. You can't take it back. The the only thing I'm going to disagree with you there is he was not wrong in that stance. It's unfortunately the way that you have to go. But the way that the NCAA has set it up is kind of bullshit that you have donors you have donors paying for the buildings. You have donors paying for the we, upgrades. We have, yeah, have, I'm not saying I agree. Like with with the way that it has gone, I'm it's saying just what the way has that happened it is. was you're right. There are people that took this stance that we're not going to do that. Okay, we we believe everybody on our team is entitled to name, image, and likeness. We believe that. They are entitled to, you know, everybody gets basically a sum of money that we pay. And if you can make more like Des Ritter and Sauce Gardner and a couple of those guys did, like you'll make a lot more above and beyond what the baseline is. Well, 
Cal sold that to the Kentucky donor base. We don't, we're not paying for players here. We're Kentucky. We're Kentucky. We don't have to pay for players. And then when they did have to pay for players, from what I'm told, he tried, he he ran an event or like it's like set up an event where they were they plan was to raise a million dollars in NIL money. And I think they raised fifty thousand. And as a coach, that is when you realized I fucked up. I fucked up because I told everybody we don't need your money. We're good. We got it. You don't have to, like, we got this. You guys just be fans. It's cool. I'm just going to go back to your previous stat of 50 first round picks over 15 years, which is an average of three and a third per Uh year of first round picks. If this school, Cincinnati, had three and a third first round picks every year for 15 years and we came (laughs) out with one national championship what though four four other final fours like the first Look, 10 years of the cal era were incredible aaron incredible when, i would when you understand get to the final four it's a coin flip what i'm gonna say is something that i never expected myself to ever say in my entire life <laughs> and i'm actually gonna understand a little bit where big blue nation is coming from because you have a guy who has, despite Steph Greenberg's best oh, PR God. buffer, he's I've such, ever he's so awful. He's Steph carrying is terrible. I want to know. I want to know how sore he is from carrying Coach Cal's water, because that's he all he's been play, doing. He's so bad. He's so it's bad. so obvious too. It's gross. Um, but despite his best efforts, he's severely underachieved in every way, shape, and form. Because so look, man, that's a lot here's where of you're talent. Right. That's a lot of talent. Here's where you're right. The first 10 years was ex- more than acceptable. Yeah, one title, probably it should have been two or three. They had the undefeated team that lost in the, the final four. Um, but they had great teams for a decade. And then the last five years, they did nothing. They Less than the Tubby. Less they, than they, Tubby. They, they missed the tournament. They lost to St. Peter's. They lost to Oakland. Like the last five years, almost, almost tanked the first ten. Now, who's next at Kentucky? Because the game is changing, Aaron. Danny Hurley doesn't have to leave UConn. He shouldn't. I don't think he will. I like. I, I legitimately. He is. He is perfect. For where he's at, he has found he's a earned, home. He's earned a raise at UConn. Massive raise. With, Massive without a, raise. Without a doubt, he's earned a raise. So UConn should be able to match whatever Kentucky is throwing at him. I, I mean, or, or, let's say, or at least come close, but you, yeah. you're you not going to be starting on the hot seat. Right. Or at least a warm seat because you have people who have lofty expectations immediately because you're Kentucky. Here, here's the crazy thing, Aaron. Danny Hurley didn't win a tournament game until year five at UConn. That is pretty crazy. He did not win a tournament game at Rhode Island. He did not win a tournament game at Wagner. He had not won. He had not won a tournament game until the first game of the tournament a season ago. Now he has 12. So it's, it's a little different. But Imagine what he would do at Kentucky if it took him that long. And it wouldn't because he's obviously now the biggest name, the biggest face of college basketball. It wouldn't take him that long. But imagine if it took him five years to win his first tournament game at Kentucky. He would have been fired a year before that. And they never would have won two championships in a row. Yeah, if it took him that long to win a tournament game, yeah. They're out. They're out on you. Yeah. And now... And okay. we found out it doesn't – buyouts don't matter at Kentucky either. No. Well, they didn't have to pay it. They, they He left. They didn't have to fire him. He left. That's the, the – actually, buyouts do matter at Kentucky, Aaron, because they weren't going to pay him $33 million to go away. He should, he should have waited. He I should know. Have waited. 
I know. They just said, no, we're fine making you miserable. I, we're I'm, fine I'm pretty, making your life suck. Did he get paid more to go to Arkansas than he was going to make at Kentucky? It'll end up being roughly about the same, about eight, well, eight and a half. Then I then I guess it I guess it wouldn't have mattered because I, I think the clause was whatever you're making at your next job would be the difference. Right. We'll pay you the difference. So he would have had to either yeah. sit He's or, making about the same, roughly. Then then yeah, uh, then it, then it's a moot point. And he'll probably be able to walk his dogs without somebody saying that it's being selfish. Brent. <laughs> What, what a weird fuck was that last night? <laughs> what a weird stance. How selfish of him to walk his dog. <laughs> On this day of all days. <laughs> but, okay, so but it's not going to be Danny Hurley. It's not going to be Nate Oates. It's probably not going to be Billy Donovan. He he spoke out against being happy oh, with the Bulls. Did, did, did you see what happened with the Bulls tonight, though? Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, there is a replay going. It's one of the best everywhere. highlights on the pl- on the planet. It's a guy trying to give himself an alley oop off the backboard, but the and guy, the guy coming him, from behind him, the guy, the guy, the guy, the guy, the guy trailing him also thought it was an alley oop for him, and so they both try to go up for the alley oop, and nobody comes down with it. They all go down on the floor. It's a mess. Billy Donovan in that moment might have decided, "Yeah, I'm going to Kentucky." He, he very well might have. Might have. <laughs> But it's not going to be Jay Wright. He spoke out on TV yesterday. It, he's smart. Take a job. If, he, if Jay Wright comes back to basketball, take a job where you're not immediately on the hot seat. So here's a little bit where I disagree, Aaron. There's like two or three candidates where if they get the job, they've got a lot of grace period at Kentucky because Kentucky gets what the fan base wants. Right? If Danny took that job, there would be a – couple year grace period where the fan base would say okay it takes him a little bit of time to build it but he's gonna build it and we believe in that sure if it's anybody else if it's anybody but those top three or four guys they're coming into a death sentence they're coming into a place that unless they win a championship within two years like i'll throw a name out there i don't think he's going to get the job i'm just throwing a name out there Let's say T.J. Otzelberger is where Kentucky lands. T.J. Otzelberger has had three amazing years at Iowa State. They have been far better than anybody expected from the day T.J. Otzelberger was hired. The minute that Kentucky hires him, that fan base wants him fired. Agreed. I'd even say the same for Scott Drew. Um, I don't think, I think they'll settle for Scott Drew. If you've looked at any of the responses to any of the, the posts about I, yeah, Scott I've Drew. Yeah, some of it, yeah. I think they would settle for Scott Drew, but they don't want Scott Drew. He's right. not on their, their tier one, which right. is bananas, because the guy right. has as many championships as the guy who was John there before. Calipari. <laughs> at Baylor. College basketball coaching is changing. There are still elite blue blood jobs, but there are now more guys at jobs they are comfortable at in situations that they are comfortable winning. They know they have an NIL budget. They have a war chest. They know that they're making five, six, seven, eight million dollars a year. And they know that if I if I have a dip for two or three years where, you know, we have a good team, but we don't get out of the round of, of 32, people aren't coming for their head. Nate Oates is at Alabama. He made the first Final Four in Alabama history. He is not in danger at Alabama for four, five, six, seven years. As long as he keeps performing well and winning, they're if he goes to Kentucky, pay, they're going to pay him handsomely as well. So I, why would you leave? Yeah, if he goes to Kentucky and loses once in the round of thirty-two, once in the Sweet Sixteen, and he makes an Elite Eight in four years, let's say in four years, he hasn't made a Final Four, and he's not good enough for Kentucky, and you need to get the fuck out. 
that changes the dynamic of how many people were lining up for the Alabama job, Aaron, for football. For football? After saving? Six months ago. Five months ago. Whatever it is. Nobody, nobody wants to be the guy after the guy. But still... It's a job with all the resources, all of the potential, like all of the tradition, all of the history, and nobody was beating down the door to get to that to that job. They nobody got the guy wants, from Washington. Nobody wants to be the guy after the guy. Nobody wants to go deal with a bunch of the bullshit that you have to deal with. Aaron, five years ago, before Saban, like there was a lull for Saban, right? He had these this championship flurry and then he had a little bit of a lull where like Clemson kind of came on and there was competition and they weren't as dominant and Bama fans you know what they said game is past saving by probably not the guy probably not going to get us to the next probably not going to take us to the next level and then he wins like three more championships in five years and they shut up <laughs> but that's because Nick Saban is the greatest college coach ever if he would not have sustained and like rebounded, they would have fired Dick Saban. Well, what you have to hope is that the fan base doesn't automatically hate somebody after they've been hired. If they don't get Billy Donovan, not going to get Nate Oates, not going to get Scott Drew, who I don't think they necessarily as a fan base want Billy Donovan, Jay Wright, Maybe Bruce Pearl. I think the Kentucky fan base would love Bruce Pearl. Like, I, I, think, I do right. think he would. I, I think you're right. I think he would wow them and, like, charm them and win them over. I think he's probably the right answer. But if they don't get one of those five or six guys at the absolute top of the list, no matter who it is, their career is over at Kentucky before it starts. Oh, kind of like, you know, when when we hired a football coach here after Luke. And everybody was convinced the day he was hired that he was not the guy and he had to go. Find out. Yep. It's a wild world in coaching right now. That's a nightcap brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken right here on BearcatJournal.com. See ya!